Creepy pasta time, I work as a paramedic, this pandemic is just the beginning. It should have been an ordinary shift, I honestly thought it would be, a couple of drunks, a car accident, maybe an assault, but that wasn't what I got. We were responding to a call. A woman had collapsed in the city center, possibly COVID related. Routinely we arrived, told the growing crowds of spectators to stand back, as we got to work checking the elderly woman over. The young man who called the emergency services informed us she was coughing and sneezing in the pharmacists, before stumbling into the street, smearing her slimy hands along every surface as she wet. No one really wanted to help her, everyone had been too scared to get too close. I mean in these times you can't be too careful. And when I looked at her, I understood why people were so afraid to approach. Lying there on the ground, her skin was sullen, sagging and covered in patches of green lumps. Her veins were black and it was clear we were dealing with something serious, potentially some kind of blood poisoning or infection. She was wheezing heavy, her eyes bloodshot and noise running like a tap. Strangely, even though she was struggling to breathe and had collapsed, she was still partially responsive. I asked her name, but she didn't answer, instead she frantically began coughing and sneezing, spraying our visors with splatter. My partner wiped his visor and said we needed to get her to hospital immediately. I asked her if she had been abroad, as I got her into the back of the ambulance. Her response was worrying. West Africa, China recently. She wheezed. So immediately I was thinking tropical disease or infection. I put her on some oxygen, and held her hand, suspecting she wouldn't last the journey. But she seemed to get more talkative as we traveled. I was here in 1917 you know. She coughed, filling the mask with ooze. My partner radio in ahead to inform the hospital that we were en route with a patient, suffering from potentially an unknown tropical disease. They used to draw X's on their doors, when I visited their homes. She cackled her laughter sputtering, with every word. I was disturbed, but I kind of just thought she was delirious. Do you want to know a secret? She wheezed. I dared not say yes, already worried by the things she was saying. This pandemic, it's nothing. What comes next will make it seem like sniffle. Smirked the woman. What do you mean? I asked, a question that caused the woman's slimy mouth, stretched into a mucus stripping grin as she removed the mask from her face. Me and my three brothers, we're going to start our world tour soon. It's going to be so big, bigger than the Black Death, bigger than COVID. Everyone will know my name. She sneezed, spraying the interior of the van in her infectious sludge. It was beginning to sink in, who this person was, or ATL East who she was claiming to be. Before I could say another thing, the ambulance stopped and before I knew it, she was being wheeled out. I didn't know what to do, should I have stopped her? Tell my partner and the hospital staff that she's pestilence, disease incarnate. Yeah right, they would cart me off, if I said something like that. It was her cackling that haunted me the most. The sound of that unhinged sickly laughter as they rolled her in. There was a wicked sense of victory in her laughter and it stayed with me all night. If you're wondering why I'm typing this, why I chose to tell people, I felt I had to. I know the authorities would never take my story seriously, and feared that they would just cover it up. Despite that, I have to try, to warn people. I have to get this out there somehow, because after her admission, other patients began displaying similar symptoms to the old woman. Some of the staff did too and now I've just been told my partner, wasn't coming in today, off sick apparently. I don't want to worry you all too much, but I'm not feeling too good either. Mm -hmm.